I'd like to pick up on something Edith said um, at the beginning, though. I think it's a shame, in a way, that this protest is coming the day after the president gave a speech on Iraq, uh, because I think most people in the country and in the city are concentrated on Iraq. And uh, many oppose what's happening in Iraq, I do. Uh, but I think it's a different sort of failure. It's a failure of management and uh, something that's cost the treasury of the country and cost a lot of our sons and daughters. It's terribly important. But one thing goes different. Uh, one part of it is a moral failure. It goes much deeper. It, it goes to the soul of the nation and what we stand for. It violates everything I think this nation stands for. Let me repeat some things I, I would like to say about Guantanamo. Who are these four of these uh, 400 people at Guantanamo? It's now clear based on government documents, and I thank C. and Paul, uh, law school for this, and also the National Journal for doing the study of it. But it's now clear that the vast majority of them were not taken into custody by the United States and were not captured anywhere near any battlefield. They were turned over by Pakistani and Northern Alliance warlords who returned from large financial bounties. As Gita said, of all the people at Guantanamo, only 8% are even accused of being connected with Al Qaeda. Through the five years since Guantanamo has been open, the United States has designated only 14 of all the people who have been there as people that have reason to believe were connected with terrorists. Only 10 of those people have been charged. Those 10 people, along with the other 14 so-called high-value detainees, recently transferred from secret prison. The United States said they're going to try for war crimes. Um, the others, and if they're convicted, they'll be sentenced to terms in prison. That's all, what people say. The other people who are in Guantanamo have served five-year terms, and they served those terms without charge, without hearing, and without trial, and with no end in sight. This is incredible. And you know, what is it that they want? And I need to start out, I need to start out too, by her. Well, the Center for Constitutional Rights and we asked for five years ago, and what these people asked for is a very simple thing. A hearing. They simply want a fair hearing to see if there's any reasonable basis to hold them there. That's all they've ever asked for. And for five years, the administration had fought tooth and nail to prevent them the most basic element of the rule of law, simply a fair hearing. Now, it's incredible to me what's happened. I don't know whether you've read, but recently the commandant at Guantanamo has cracked down on the way he's treating these people. He's made it much tougher. They're not no one's allowed to congregate together. They're all kept in isolation. They're not really ever allowed to exercise together. And the reason why he says all of these people should be treated like terrorists. If you read it, the reason he gives is not any evidence against them because there is no terrorists. There's very little. And they want the best to be in an open hearing. The reason he gives is that they act that they've engaged in terrorist-like activities while at Guantanamo. What are those activities? They've engaged in such horrible things as hunger strikes and even has a goal to commit suicide. So this is incredible, really incredible. Talk to what I've had a field day with Guantanamo. The real problem about Guantanamo for our nation, of course, is that everyone around the world who hates the United States or wants others to hate the United States is already having a field day with Guantanamo. It's a chief recruiting tool for terrorism around the world. You know, Guantanamo shames our nation and hurts our security every day it remains open. We said this about three years ago, but Mr. President, give these people a fair hearing and shut down this damn place. Now, I, I know I should stop there, but I, I want to read something, but that's a rousing thing, but just, I, I want to read something. Today, uh, one of our fellow lawyers, Josh Colangelo, um, got a letter from one of his detainees down there, and it's printed, I believe, in the LA Times today, and I just want to read a little bit of it, because, you know, frankly, when I read it, it made me cry, and it's, you know, it said, when you go down there and see these kids, who are chained to the floor and been there five years without a hearing. And it just, it branches, if you believe in, in anything that was written in the Federalist Papers, the Declaration of Independence, and see the way we're treating these people, it just, it changed and so terrible. But this is the guy, Jamal al Ghaffari, who has tried to commit suicide several times. And I'll just read the beginning and the end of what he said. He's strung up with 
I am writing from the darkness of the U.S. detention camp at Guantanamo. My hand quivers as I hold the pen. He then goes on to detail how he was captured, how he isn't connected with Al Qaeda, but never heard the United States, uh, and how he has just been brutally treated down there. Then he ends by saying, Oh, I can open it up. He says, I would rather die than stay here forever, and I have tried to commit suicides many times. The purpose of Guantanamo is to destroy people, and I have been destroyed. I am hopeless because our voices are not heard from the depths of the detention center. If I die, please remember that there was a human being named Yama at Guantanamo whose beliefs, dignity, and humanity were abused. Please remember that there are hundreds of detainees at Guantanamo suffering the same misfortune. They have not been charged with any crimes. They have not been accused of taking any action against the United States. Show the world the letters I gave you. Let the world read them. Let the world know the agony of the detainees in Cuba. Once again, Mr. President, close down, tear down this lawless prison.